This is my buddy Brian. I'm Richard. I tend to take things a little too serious, so goofing around is good for me. <laughs> and this is Georgia, my better half. We hope you join us for our adventures and travels on Cabo. We were resting in the room and we heard some noise. We came outside to find this. This is precision driving and just the tool you need to step a mask. It's quite an impressive operation at Clark's Court Marina. They use all available tools to get the job done and the crews are very efficient. Now it's time to lay out the trampolines. Retrieving them from the salon and bringing them forward. First of all, laying out these trampolines is not hard at all. But watching myself in the video, you think I was trying to put fitted queen size sheets on a king size bed. Just ridiculous. On the left you can see I've started the repair. The missing uh, material in the middle and yeah, some right. scars from who knows what. I've taken all the high edges off. Now I'm doing a wipe with isopropyl alcohol to clean it. If you look carefully, you can see a patch right below in the center there. Checking the size of my patch. Here I spray a little bit of water on there that allows the um, patch to be moved or removed quite easily. Again, getting the backing off, this is the most difficult part of this job. When applying the graphic, you want to hold it, not pull on it. If you pull on the two ends, it stretches and won't lay down properly. So it takes practice to do this correctly. It's in position and now it's time to work the air and water out from underneath the patch. Squirt a little water on there to keep from scratching the, the patch. You'll also notice that the patch is wider. Putting patches on the vinyl wasn't my first choice but it was really the only choice given how much time it was going to take to remove all the existing. From 10 feet you can't hardly tell that there's any patches at all and it's rare that anybody gets closer than 10 feet if, unless they're docking the boat or they're going to hit it. So I think we're okay. The extra material will be trimmed off and it'll blend in perfectly. This process was repeated many times until all the scar marks and missing vinyl was replaced. So the repairs have been made, the vinyl stripes are now complete, and I'm quite satisfied with the results. The boat looks much, much better. The steps in the side of the boat are in need of new non-skid, so I'm removing the black non-skid and will install gray non-skid. Uh, just for the record, that is an orange plastic razor blade if you use steel razor blade, you'll end up scratching the gel coat. So don't use steel razor blades, use plastic. PB Blaster is a wonderful solvent and works better than Gooby Gone. Um, you just gotta let it sit for a couple of minutes and the glue comes right off. While the PB Blaster is dissolving the glue, I'm cutting the new um, gray non-skid to fit into the space. A little mechanical action with the plastic razor blade to remove the uh, residual glue and then a rag just to wipe it off. After wiping it off with the rag, we'll use a little isopropyl alcohol little to clean the surface so that we get good alcohol. adhesion between the um, 3M sticker and the gel coat. The most difficult aspect of this particular job was actually removing the backing from the non-skid. Very challenging. Bingo. Well, I'm pretty good at bringing the tools I need for a job. There's always that one tool that I don't have that I have to go back and get. The battery terminals and washers and nuts were dirty, so I pulled the battery out to clean those. Now I'm reinstalling them. Watching the video of me doing the different projects on the boat, 
I notice that I'm huffing and puffing a lot. I don't know if it's because it's hot down there or if I'm just physically out of shape. But I'm happy to report that I was able to keep up with the work and we got a lot more done than we had actually hoped to accomplish. So it's all good news. Had a little excitement this morning. We started lacing up the trampolines. That went well. Um, we started both engines. That also went well. Um, polishing the side of the boat and that was going well. But then I walked off the end of the scaffolding and fell four feet to the ground. Um, I have a little water bottle um, spray as I'm polishing and I landed on that and that took the impact. Um, I did bend my fingernail and I think I sprained my thumb but I'm okay. Um, just part of what happens with boat work sometimes. Fortunately I didn't get hurt and uh, we're getting cleaned up. We're going to go play today. It's a state holiday in Grenada and um, we're going to go see what we can find. Grenada is home to about 112,523 people as of July 2020. The island country of Grenada consists of Grenada and two smaller islands, Curacao and Petit Martinique. Known as the Spice Island, Grenada is home to numerous nutmeg plantations. It is believed that Christopher Columbus sighted Grenada in 1498 during his third voyage to the Americas. Following several unsuccessful attempts by the Europeans to colonize the island due to resistance from the island Caribs, French settlement and colonization did not begin until 1649 and continued for the next century. On February 10, 1763, Grenada was ceded to the British under the Treaty of Paris. British rule continued until 1974. Except for a brief French takeover between 1779 and 1783, from 1958 to 1962, Grenada was part of the Federation of the West Indies, a short-lived federation of the British West Indian colonies. On March 3, 1967, Grenada was granted full autonomy over its internal affairs as an associated state. Independence was granted on February 7, 1974, under the leadership of Sir Eric Gary, who became the first Prime Minister of Grenada of the Sovereign State. The new country became a member of the Commonwealth of Nations with Queen Elizabeth II as the head of state. Oh, I see you. You guys should be out flying around. After we left Annadale Falls, we both realized that we were pretty tired from all the work we had been doing on the boat. So we decided to go to Grand Anse Beach and go for a swim. But honestly, when we got there, we found a spot in the shade, put our towels down, laid down, and took a nice short nap. The new trampolines are installed. The old ones are not yet cut away. Going through a process of stretching them we have the sails going back on and a radar being installed, so I will cut the old nets away when that work is complete. I'm going to change out the port engine control, but before I do that, I'm going to disconnect the battery. But I need some light and some air because it's pretty warm down here. Most of the jobs on the boat are not difficult, but there's a lot of movement around the boat to get them done. I'm testing the panel to make sure it's de-energized. Removing it is easy with four screws. The LCD display was difficult to read, so I have a replacement panel. And while it worked, the tachometer did not. So ultimately, the old unit went back in. 
and it'll get changed out at a future date. And going back downstairs to hook the battery up so I can test the control panel. We get our fair share of exercise as we move around the boat to perform all the different boat projects, which is really terrific. Distant Shores 2, the old boat of Paul and Cheryl from the well-known TV show Distant Shores. We are lowering the anchor to add a shackle between the swivel and the anchor. This will allow the chain to swing around without adding a torsional load to the swivel. As they say, mistakes will be made. I did not need to disconnect the chain from the swivel. I needed to disconnect the swivel from the anchor. Installing the shackle to the anchor and now adding the swivel to the shackle. I'm just realizing that the screw is facing down when the anchor is on the ground, which if it got loose it would just fall out. So I'm flipping it around so the screw will be on top. It's a better arrangement. See, it doesn't really work. The throat isn't deep enough. I mean, it's better than it was. These corners need to be rounded. Because you want it to be able to swing all the way, and but it's hitting right now, because if that were a little bit longer. I think that's the answer. See, so it can do that. Yeah. I have a side grinder. I should use that. Generally, it's much, much better. Yeah, we'll go with it. Hmm. We added about six and a half feet of this half inch trim lock drip rail above the salon windows, and it works to keep the water out. The boat had been a complete mess for the entire time on the hard. Now it was time to clean it up because we were getting ready to be launched. All right, we got the boat cleaned up. We're getting close to launching. That's enough boat work for this time. Come back next time when we put the sails on, launch and do some actual boating. Thanks for watching.